Dallas Cowboys. Every opponent wants to be the team to knock out the champions. Quarterback Troy Aikman has taken blows with concussive force. But the Cowboys continue to get up off the canvas to win round after round. Even when we've been down and we've been in close ball games, we have the confidence, and all great teams do, have the confidence that we're going to be able to pull it out. And somehow, in some way, somebody is going to make a play that's going to get us over the top and get us back on track that we need to be in a game. And uh, that's the belief that we have. And more times than not, that's what happens. The title belt is still in Dallas, but the pounding will continue tonight as the New York Giants stand in against the Dallas Cowboys on ABC's Monday Night Football. The Giants are coming on tonight. So get ready. I mean, get ready. Are you ready for some football? A Monday night party. We got Frank and Al and Dan. They're gonna get it kick started. Man and the crew's all set. The crowd is psyched. Cause all my ratty friends are back for Monday night. The skyline of Dallas, Texas on a beautiful southwest November evening and a few miles from the heart of downtown Dallas, Texas Stadium and the familiar hole in the roof. Texas Stadium, home of the Dallas Cowboys, is sold out tonight for the New York Giants. Hello again, everyone. Frank Gifford with Al Michaels and Dan Deerdorf. Happy you're with us tonight. The Cowboys and the Giants, the two-time Super Bowl champion Cowboys, they're on another roll. They are 7-1 on the season. The only glitch on their record was an overtime loss to the Detroit Lions right here on a Monday night seven weeks ago. But still, they have to look over the shoulder. Philadelphia, should they lose tonight, will fall into a tie with the Dallas Cowboys in the NFC Eastern Division. Meanwhile, the Giants have lost five in a row, while the Cowboys have won five in a row. The Giants got off to a good start. They won their first three, even though they were hit hard by free agency during the offseason, losing a lot of players. But during their five-game losing streak, a lot of other problems have cropped up, Al, and that's been compounded by the fact they come into tonight needing everybody and they have a lot of injuries in key positions. Frank, expectations were raised when they won those first three games. People thought this was a 500 team. Now they've come crashing back to the surface. Dan Reeves says, my frustration is we just haven't played well at all during those five games. Indeed, they haven't. The young quarterback, Dave Brown, has thrown three interceptions that have been run back for touchdowns. The Giants have been on the short end of a lot of dubious officiating calls. And last week, they committed 14 penalties in an overtime loss to Detroit. So how can the Giants possibly win in Dallas tonight. They simply don't come close to stacking up in terms of talent with the Cowboys. Their best chance to win tonight is simply this. The Cowboys are looking forward to their game next Sunday in Candlestick Park in San Francisco. So while the Giants are having problems then the Cowboys it doesn't matter whether it's a coaching change or free agency or a salary cap they just keep on rolling. Now they were the best team in 1992. They were the best team in the National Football League in 1993 and at the halfway point of the 1994 season they are still the best team in the National Football League. When you're trying to dominate what you start off doing is trying to dominate your division. Well the Cowboys tonight are going for their 12th consecutive win in the National Football Conference's Eastern Division a very very tough division. Look how they've dominated over the last two and a half seasons including the postseason and regular season. They are 38 and 8 in the last two and a half years. Years. I think you'd call that domination. Now let's look at the game tonight. Specifically, what is good news and bad news for the Giants? The good news would be that Jay Novacek isn't going to play. You can double up the outside receivers. The bad news, Emmett Smith is 334 yards behind Barry Sanders. He desperately wants his fourth consecutive rushing title. And for more news, Dan, let's go down to the field. Lynn Swan has giant wide receiver Mike Sherrard. Uh, thank you, Mike. With the team's record three and five, how, is, how important is it for this team to not just play well but make the big play? Uh, that's the thing I'm thinking about right now, uh, doing my uh, assignments and making the big play. That thing will take a lot of pressure off the quarterback and hopefully help us win. The last thing Dan Reeves told this team before you came out here? He said to have a lot of fun, do our assignments, and uh, we got to come out with the victory. Thank you very much, Mike. Al, we're ready for some football. 
Okay, thank you, Swanee. It's tough to have a lot of fun in Dallas because not many teams have come in in the visiting uniforms and had fun here since 1991. The Cowboys in 91 in the third year of the Jimmy Johnson reign became one of the elite teams in the league. And then, of course, in 92 and 93, Super Bowl champions. Dave Meggett drops back to receive the kick along with Thomas Lewis, the rookie. Chris Bonyol to put it in the air. Flash bulbs popping at Texas Stadium, and the game is underway. Dave Meggett from the 10-yard line, and good Cowboy coverage as they stop Meggett up at the 22, a 12-yard run back. Brock Marion in there on the tackle. Dave Brown came out of Duke, played very sparingly in his first two seasons as a Giant. Then when Phil Simms was let go, Brown and Kent Graham battled for the number one spot. Brown won it. Hampton and Rashid in the backfield. Sherrard and Callaway are the wideouts, and Cross is the tight end. Up front, the Giants with Jumbo Elliott, William Roberts, and Brian Williams. Scott Davis replaces the injured Lance Smith and Doug Riesenberg. And from the 22-yard line, Brown throws a wobbly pass too high and off the fingertips of the fullback, Rashid. And there is Lance Smith, who has played in 123 consecutive games, made 121 consecutive starts, each the longest streak in the NFL. That ends tonight. Tolbert, Maryland, Leon Lett, and Charles Haley, the front four for the Cowboys. Edwards, Jones really coming into his own. Smith is very fast. Smith and Brown are excellent corners. Washington and Woodson, the very hard-hitting safeties. The Giants, second and 10 from the 22. The sole setback is Rodney Hampton. Nothing there, but he bounces off and turns no gain into a six-yard pickup. Darren Smith with the tackle. It'll be third down and four. Well, there's no question the Giants desperately would love to run the football tonight as Dave Brown takes the calls coming in from the sideline. Danny Reeves providing most of the calls, getting help from offensive coordinator George Henshaw. And Reeves, make no mistake about it, he controls the offense. But the Giants are 28th and last in the National Football League on offense. They have rushed the ball 13th in the league, so they would like to get that going if they could tonight. Third and a long four. Out of a split back set, Rashid stays in the block. Hampton is out into the pattern, and the pass is broken up. Robert Jones and Darren Smith had him double covered over the middle, and the Giants are three and out. Oh, so much speed defensively for this defense, Dan. They give up size for speed. Of course, there's a look at Barry Switzer, who took over from Jimmy Johnson, a much celebrated move, but move by owner Jerry Jones. But Dallas, defensively, they are so fast. I think you're open and they close it down so quickly. Mike Horan to punt. Kevin Williams, the Cowboy run back specialist, returning punts and kickoffs back to receive it. It is a 51 yard kick and oh. tremendous coverage as Willie Beeman gets down there to take care of Williams. So a great kick by Horan and no run back. And the Cowboys are pinned back at their own 18-yard line. 51-yard kick and minus three on the return. Troy Aikman, 11 TDs, five interceptions in his sixth year. And sustaining a couple of concussions already in 1994. Smith and Johnston in the backfield. Harper and Irvin, the great wideouts. Galbraith for the injured Novacek at tight end. Two and a Newton, Stefanowski, Kennard, and the rookie Larry Allen in place of Eric Williams, who was hurt in that auto accident a couple of weeks ago. And Emmett Smith through the middle after the 26-yard line for a game of close to eight. Carlton Bailey in on the tackle. The Giants now defensively. Mike Strahan is hurt, so they make a change up front with Hamilton Fox, Howard, and Coleman Rudolph getting the start tonight at right end. Brooks is having a great year. Bailey in the middle and Corey Miller. The secondary has been porous. Raymond and Randolph the corners. Williams and Campbell are the safeties. Thomas Randolph, rookie out of Kansas State. Second and two from the 26, and they give it to Emmett Smith again. He probes for that first down and gets it up to the 29-yard line. First and 10, Jarvis Williams with the tackle and a little uh, exchange there between Harper and Randolph. Well, I think what we're seeing right off the bat for the Dallas Cowboys is what we heard yesterday from their head coach, Barry Switzer. 
asked him to talk about his club here at the midway point. One, what's one thing you'd like to do better? And he said, we have to get the ball to Emmett Smith more. Emmett is 334 yards coming into the game tonight behind Barry Sanders. And this guy, Barry Switzer, would like to see Emmett Smith win that rushing title one more time. Emmett Smith, very much aware that Sanders only got 47 yards yesterday. They take it to Smith. Look at that protection. And then the pass is incomplete, intended for the normally pretty sure-handed Darrell Johnston. I think Darrell Johnston was very surprised, probably almost as surprised as Aikman that he delivered the ball to him. Take a look at it once again. Aikman looking downfield. Johnson just is staying in to pick up a linebacker, and he slips the linebacker. Derek Howard puts the pressure on Aikman. But that's, if anything, is a hallmark of Aikman's career. It's that pass play right there. He will stand there and stand there and stand there and take that hit to get the pass away. He takes a pounding. Second and ten. Smith, big hole through the middle again. And he makes his way up to the 36-yard line. It'll be third and three. Bailey in on the hit for New York. I would not be the least bit surprised tonight, guys, to see Emmett Smith get 26, 28, even 30 carries. And that means they will be controlling the ball on the ground. They feel that they can do that, even though they have been hurt a little bit on that offensive line with the loss of the well, remember, big tackle. The last time these two teams played, last December, Emmett carried it 32 times with a separated shoulder. Tremendous performance. The Cowboys won that one in overtime to win the division crown. Third and three. Aikman looks the other way, and then wide open is Michael Irvin. And how many times have you seen Irvin that wide open? I mean, he is a magnet, but somehow he got free over the middle and picks up the first down. Well, if you give any quarterback of certainly Aikman's stature that kind of time, they're going to look around and find a receiver. There was no pressure whatsoever on him. He was just standing there back there. Urban worked all over the field. Look at the time he has. A lot of protection. That's redefining, though, a soft zone. <laughs> that is redefining the zone. They better tighten that baby up or they're in trouble. These guys, Harper and Urban, too good to allow to be that wide open. Now out of the eye, they give it to Smith. He tries the right side, gets across the 50, takes the ball into giant territory to the 49-yard line. He is stopped there by Corey Miller. And once again, the ball goes to Emma Smith. As Dan said, we're going to see a lot of him tonight. And the more and better he does running the football, the easier it's going to be for the Cowboys to throw the football. Cowboys have scored a touchdown on five of their eight opening drives. On the other side, the Giants have not allowed a touchdown in their last 30 regular season games on an opponent's opening drive. Seventh play of this drive coming on second and five. Aikman throws and the catch is made. Good coverage by Bailey, but Scott Galbraith, who's taking the spot of the injured Jay Novacek, makes the catch at the 44. That should be a first down. Novacek is hurt. He can hold on kicks, but he will not play tight end. And I guess Galbraith now has his quotient of uh, catches. Barry Switzer said that for tonight's game, he was going to have one more catch than a dead man. <laughs> Try. Well, he's had three for the season. I mean, he's been controlled rather well. I've been trying to figure out the meaning of that. Well, he now has one more than a dead man. You see, the Giants are covering Galbraith, the linebacker. You can't do that to Novacek, and it makes a big difference with Novacek out of there. Toss. Emmett to the short side of the field, and he's run out of bounds after a gain of four at the 40-yard line. Jesse Campbell with the tackle. Probably the man they miss most in the Giants is Felipe Sparks, who is out with a groin pull, and that means that Corey Raymond, ordinarily the right cornerback, has moved over to the left side. The rookie, Thomas Randolph, has come up on the right side. Now, Randolph is 5'9". He's going to be lined up many times tonight against the six foot three Alvin Harper. And, and uh, if you follow this game, you know that Harper can go up and get it. And not only is he a rookie, as you mentioned, Frank, he's also battling a, a turf toe problem. So he's young, he's hurt, and he's going against some of the very best. Not a, not a great troika there. Ball for the motion on second and six. The fake. Aikman under pressure, and before the screen can be set up properly, Michael Brooks is the man who broke that play up. Great rush, put the pressure on Aikman, forced him to release too early. Brooks has had an outstanding year. He is a Pro Bowl caliber linebacker, came with Dan Rees from Denver. They tried him in middle linebacker early in the year. That didn't work out. They moved him to the outside, and he's had an outstanding year, and, and this is good pressure. He gets away from uh, Stefanowski, the center, who tried to pick him up and forces Aikman 
to throw the air and pass. Like all blitzes, timing is such a big part of it, and that was timed perfectly by Brooks. Smith tried to trip him, but didn't get enough of him. Third down and six at the 40-yard line. No score. 9.20 remaining in the first quarter. Deep drop. Aikman throws. Open man is Irvin, but he's tackled before he can get the first down. He's two yards shy. Good tackle by Thomas Randolph to make sure he didn't get away. Boy, and that's a good job by Randolph, who's locked up with Irvin, chases him all the way across the formation and makes the play. A decision for Barry Switzer as to whether to go for it or not, and they are not. See, so look at Randolph there in the trail position, and then comes up and makes a strong tackle against a much bigger man. If Randolph plays like that the rest of the night, Frank, he'll be just fine. And he hopes it's all That's, underneath like this all day. Yeah. That's quality work there by Thomas Randolph, the rookie from Kansas State. On fourth and two, John Jett in the kick. Good boys. And he floats it down into the corner. And Brock Marion gets down there at the one-yard line. The ball is loose. Boy, it's a shame the Giants gave up on that yeah. uh, in their coverage because that was a full-blown fumble. Looks like Kenny Gant is uh, hurt and down on the field, but that was a free football. And they'll take it at the one. Greer after that last play Greer they have moved the ball to the 20 yard line Barry Switzer and Joe Avizano both want to know what's going on as well as the ball appeared to be down at the one and it stayed at the one almost to the end of the commercial take a look now it's out of the 20. Avizano has really exercised. I think the ruling was that they had Cowboys had we had stepped into the end zone with the opportunity to make a fair catch on the kicking team. Oh. It's 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. What? Well, that wasn't too apparent. Interference with the opportunity to make a fair catch. So the ball comes out to the 20-yard line. And the hey, folks, look down here at the bottom of your screen. This is Darren Woodson. This is where he gets called, and it's for. This hit that's coming up right there, and that's the personal foul, and it looked to me like Woods, when Woodson made that hit, his feet were still in bounds, and it looked to be right on the edge. That's, that's a mighty tight call in my estimation. So it moves it back to the five and negates a 20-yard run back. It pins the Cowboys deep, but Emmett Smith gets them out of the hole out to the 15-yard line, close to a first down. Michael Brooks and Corey Raymond in on the tackle. Take a look at the blocking here by the Cowboy offensive line. An awesome double team by Nate Newton and Mark Stepnoski. Pretty good job by the rookie, Larry Allen, too, standing yeah. up Keith Hamilton to keep him out of the play. That's as good a double team as you will ever see by a center and a guard. They took their guys six or seven yards off the football. Second and a short one. And Emmett Smith on his seventh carry picks up a first down, gets it out to the 20-yard line. Thomas Randolph makes the hit. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. It's just plain smart to fly Southwest, the low fare airline. Chrysler and the new Chrysler Cirrus Sports Sedan. And Beachwood aged Budweiser. It's always been true, this Bud's for you. Well, it's so important for an offensive team to bang their way away from their own goal line. And the Cowboys did that rather effortlessly, picking up a first down. Smith came into the game averaging 4.1 per carry, 6.1 tonight. Aikman, despite skidding on his back foot, gets it off to Johnston and to a chorus of Moose, his nickname. It's a five-yard gain to the 26. Bailey and Raymond in on the hit. Emmett loves playing under the lights on Monday Night Football. He's played six games in his scintillating career, and he's averaged 6.1 yards per carry on Monday night. And there it is. Those who have carried at least 100 times in the history of the series, Smith, James Brooks, many years with San Diego and Cincinnati, 5'7", and Eric Dickerson, 5'3". 6'1", for a former running back. I'm impressed. Yes. Second and four. Here he goes again, and that's... Uh, Pickup for E. Smith after the 33 tackle by Jarvis Williams. He's on a, a course to improve that 6 1. <laughs> Don's having a difficult time up front. What a great block by Nate Newton. 
Nate Newton's kind of kind of nurturing a bad angle but watch he comes around the corner Nate Newton and that's Newton right there who gets right inside on Carlton Bailey and eradicates him Newton the all pro left guard playing hurt but playing well first and 10 Dallas at the 34 still no score 245 to go in the quarter toss to Emmett Smith and this time he is corralled and tackled for no game Coleman Rudolph playing for the injured Mike Strahan makes the stop Rudolph a former jet picked up after the season began on waivers Rudolph's father Jack was a roommate of Dan's brother at Georgia Tech and Dan's kind of followed his career and his brother Jack played at Miami and, and they kind of kept track of each other and actually the Giants wanted to draft Rudolph there's Strahan right there he's got and he's replaced got a pair of sacks on the season and uh, boy when you've lost five in a row you just can't afford to have very many of your starters sitting over on the sidelines but tonight the Giants unfortunately have three on second and ten Aikman with a familiar deep drop and then bullet pass to Irvin and somehow he escapes but that escape cost him about five yards as he's corralled finally back on the other side of the 50 at the 49. I know one thing the Giants acted like that was Herman Moore and they had a second shot at him. <laughs> uh, Randolph again locked up with one of the toughest receivers ever to play this game to blame man for man Michael Irvin over in the left side Aikman looks off Randolph a little bit he hesitated for a moment and Irving was there. It's a 15 yard gain Cowboys at their own 49 first and 10. A little dump off now to the safety valve Emmett Smith and he takes it across the 50 to the giant 47 a gain of four. 131 to go first quarter. No score. Al touched on it earlier so much concern about Troy Aikman and the problems he's had. Of course he had the concussion in the championship game a year ago the NFC championship game he doesn't remember that game and of course here in Dallas they remember Roger Staubach who retired before his career was really over mainly because he started getting more frequent concussions and so there's a lot of concern and Troy Aikman has helped us focus on that concern second and six Smith picking well, threading and moves to the 39 as only he can do behind a Darrell Johnston block in the first down. I guess, you, out of Brooks. I guess you could call that a good lead block block by a fullback. <laughs> He's really blossomed into one heck of a receiver, but he got into this league by lead blocks like this. Here he comes right at you. He comes around the block by Kennard, and then look at the perfect positioning as he gets into Michael Brooks right below the waist and puts him down on the ground. I guess you, when you could take a Pro Bowl linebacker oh. out, knock him off yep. his feet, you're doing a good job as a running back. Well, Frank's blocking. Yeah, you know, yeah, he hit him in exactly the right spot. Right below the belt, mid thigh, put him down. Ninth play of this drive, and the pass is caught at the 22 yard line by Michael Irvin, and that's a first down on an 18 yard pickup. So the quarter will end in the quarter. Dallas with 119 total yards and the Giants with 15. But the score is nothing, nothing. And Monday Night Football returns after this message and a word from our ABC station. And I'm okay. You guys get home and vote, okay? Mm hmm. Second quarter. Aikman begins on first and ten by throwing in the end zone. Touchdown, Alvin Harper. <laughs> you know, Frank, nobody will believe me, but I'm going to say it anyway. Before the play, Frank nudges me in the ribs and taps his spotting board right on top of number 80. And why not? It's where the Cowboys love to go to Alvin Harper, his leaping ability. And what a year he is having. Uh, you link him yeah. up with a five foot nine rookie from Kansas State, a good athlete, no chance out there. However, you got him locked up all alone. He knows he has help on the inside. And too far and too late was Jarvis Williams. Yeah, you've got to you gotta have some help inside from a safety when that receiver turns to the inside like that. There's no way the corner's gonna cover a guy like Harper. That was a simply sensational drive by the Dallas Cowboys. Bone Knowles taps on the point after. 
Harper with the slam dunk. They go 95 yards in 10 plays. 7 0. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame head south for a shootout with the Florida State Seminoles. It's game one of a college football doubleheader Saturday on ABC. 7 0 Cowboys. Dave Meggett dropping back for New York, ready to accept the kick along with the rookie Thomas Lewis. And Chris Bognol in a moment will put it in the air for the Dallas Cowboys. They are looking apparently uh, <laughs> they've had to take a, a closer look at the goalpost after the Alvin Harper dunk which has become uh, traditional for him. Well not if they have to fix the goalpost that'll mm -hmm. be the end of this. Yeah there it is the left handed jam. Oh and he hangs on it a little bit. It's not a breakaway goalpost so uh, yeah, it's not a very sturdy <laughs> goalpost if that hurt it. <laughs> if Alvin that. if it Alvin is. did that imagine what Shaquille <laughs> would do to it. Look, look at it is a little, little bit. Look at that. Oh no. I mean, line it up with a hash marks and you can see that it's a little askew. It, you can, you're right. As looking at it from out in the field, it's lower on the right side uh, hope, hope than somebody, it is on the left. Hope somebody doesn't miss one close to the left. Well, maybe if he scores another touchdown, he'll have the presence of mind to do it on the other side. Bonyol sends it down to Megan at the three yard line. And David returns it to the 23. And the Giants will begin their next spot. <laughs> <laughs> next spot. And oh, to the opening of the NBA season. We got to call Tim Allen for a little goalpost improvement. Technical foul. The Low Fair Airline. In 1992, the Super Bowl bound Cowboys crushed the Falcons behind the sensational running of Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith swings to the outside. It's a three oh, oh. Emmett Smith doing a Barry Sanders imitation. Airline interactions with Southwest. Are they? Well, we're down in Texas where they lasso just about anything they want. This guy done lassoed him some goalposts, and he's trying to uh, reel it in a little bit. And look at that. I think he fixed it. All right. Goalposts at Alvin Harper. Hold on. The Giants now with Hampton going nowhere. He stopped back at the 21. That's a two yard loss, so make it a three yard loss. The Cowboys have now gained 141 yards in the game and the Giants 12 and Brown has yet to complete a pass he's over four. What's important for the Giants now Frank is that last drive by Dallas they only get seven points for it but that's really a 14 point drive it, it, psychologically. I was going to say it helps the defense it, it helps everybody in the organization right up to Jerry Jones that was a great drive. It's a backbreaker the Giants have got to focus now. You see the giant brain trust Wellington Mara the owner John Mara. His son, the executive counsel, and George Young, the GM, and Brown fires right on the money but out of bounds at the 33 yard line. He threw a strike to Sherrard, but he was across the line. Boy, how, how close did Charles Haley come to swiping that ball out of Brown's hand? Charles saw that he couldn't get the sack, and what, what an effort he made to try to knock the ball loose. Watch Haley here coming in behind Brown. Ooh. Just misses. In fact, he hits the right arm of Dave Brown. You can see the ball come down. You know, that'll just go into the play by play as an incompleted pass, but Charles Haley, I think, gets an assist there. His 30th pressure of the yeah. season. Third and 13 from the 21 yard line. And Brown, despite like a three and a half man rush, still goes down. Chad Hennings drops him, and Brown is now 0 for 6. Yeah, and Henning. Dan Reeves' look reflects that. Hennings has really started to come on. They have had to use him a lot more this year. They lost a couple of players a year ago. He's been in the rotation. He's the, the former Air Force Academy Hennings. player. He took in the 11th round in 1988. He had, had to serve his time in the Air Force, and he has really matured. He has four sacks, and he just put a tremendous amount of pressure on Dave Brown there. Here's Haran now, who's been kicking beautifully tonight. This one not nearly as deep. And Williams fumbles it. The Giants need a huge break. And the question is, do they get it? They did. Yep. Kevin Williams muffs the football. And that's the second time tonight. He's talking to James Washington, but the second time tonight, the ball's down on the ground. Derek Brown, the number one draft choice a couple of seasons back, makes the recovery. When you don't have possession, they call it a muff. 
Let's see if the Giants can capitalize on a break. They really need it. In the National Football League's long and illustrious history, a team with a five-game losing streak, five or more, has visited a team with a five or more game winning streak 31 times. That is the case tonight. And what's happened? In every one of those games, the team with the winning streak won the game. Oh, my so God. I hate it when you keep me in suspense <laughs> like that. In every game. So it augurs well for the... Well, Kevin Williams fumbled that punt. The Giants recovered, cashed in for three. Cowboys lead 7-3, 9.54 remaining in the first half. And Brad Dalwiso sends it into the end zone. And Dalwiso gets credit for another touchback as it's down there by Kevin Williams. 9.47 left, first half in Irving, Texas. Dallas, seven, and the Giants, three. 47 to go in the half. The Cowboys on top 7-3, and they have the ball. You know, Barry Switzer said something very interesting. I thought at the beginning of the year, he said, I'm the one who had to make the adjustment. It's easier for one guy to make the adjustment for 50 than 50 for one. So far, so good. I like what he said to us last night. We asked him, any surprises halfway through the season? He said, yeah, we're not undefeated. Yeah, their only loss was in overtime. Here's Emmett Smith picking up about four. He also said something I thought was very interesting. We asked him to assess his team and where they were here at the halfway mark. And he said, the one thing, even though we played, you know, a couple games where it was close and we lost the game here to Detroit, he said, I love the effort that this team gives on every play in every game. And he is right. If you watch the Cowboys, they don't have just one guy making a tackle. They get six or seven guys there peppering the ball carrier. They have offensive linemen hustling downfield to make hits. He used the term football character. This team has it. And offensively, it's Emmett Smith. They've got a lot of character offensively as well. And don't forget Emmett there, Smith, minus Norv Turner, yes, who was their offensive coordinator, now the head coach at Washington. They brought in Ernie Zampezi, who in effect was the mentor for Turner. And it recommended North Turner when they had called him to come here There's four Ernie, years ago. Ernie with the three pens. And you know the guy who should get some credit here for this uh, for this offense and the mentor of Ernie Zampezi, Don Coriel. Mm. Don Coriel uh, in his passing game, it lives on here in the National Football League in a big way. Third and two from the 28-yard line and Moose Johnston. Darrell takes it to the 30 and that's a first down for the Cowboys. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Beachwood Age Budweiser. It's always been true this buds for you. Braun electric shavers for the world's most recognized shave. And Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> Wild looking structure, isn't it? Well, no wonder. They're a lot wilder if they have uh, Jerry Jones as his way yeah. about it. And when you look at that roof, no wonder punt handlers have difficulty with the ball here. It comes across the roof, then into the hole, and then back into the roof again. And Alvin Harper can't handle it at the 40-yard line. Incomplete, second down, and 10. Alvin Harper up at the top, a little limp. He almost favoring that left foot, it looks like. This ball is one that should have been caught. Not that difficult. A little behind him, but we noticed before the play, our producer Kenny Wolf actually picked it up that he was limping coming out of the huddle. And wonder if that ball was behind him because he rounded off his pattern, not able to plant. Could well have been. Second and ten. Williams in motion. And Emmett Smith gets banged down after he picks up about three. Michael Brooks hammers him to the AstroTurf. It'll be third down. Well, if everybody on the New York Giants team was playing the way Michael Brooks has played so far in this ball game, they'd be ahead. He has really played a fine ball game up to this up to this point. Of course, it's nothing new. He's been playing good football for a long time, whether at Mile High Stadium or at the Meadowlands. He came with Dan Reeves. Spent his first four years with Dan in Denver, then came over as a free agent. Third down and eight from the 33. 7 12 to go in the half. Aikman, look at that block. Left out, room to roam, and takes it out to the 41. That's a first down. Oh boy, and this crowd was holding their collective breath. They knew that Aikman, what a competitor he is. He was not going to hook slide that. 
he was not going to save the body. He knew where he had to go to get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. The Giants come with the blitz inside. Jesse Armstead tries to blitz to the inside, gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Look at this, though. Look at the time that Aikman has to survey the field. He doesn't come out of there till five or six seconds, and you're right, Frank. You could hear the air go out of this place. That's nobody who likes the Dallas Cowboys wants to see this guy on the run. But he won't stop from the 42-yard line. Troy, a ton of time, throws, and the catch is made at the 39-yard line by Michael Irvin. He found the open space again, first down at the New York 39. Giants laying way back in a two-deep zone, and Irvin and Harper are deadly against that. They read it so well, along with quarterback Troy Aikman. And Irvin just takes it upfield. Slides in behind the linebacker, finds the open gap, big pickup. 19 yards. The whole purpose of that two-deep zone is to, to come up and punish them after they catch it. These Dallas receivers are too big to punish. Fake, mini roll, backside screen, flag down. Daryl Johnston rumbles inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Flag down, two flags, in fact, two separate infractions a flag at the 31 and one at the 14 <laughs> Johnston crossing too many men on the field number one against the Giants what's the other one for Johnny Greer 12 men on the field defense 55 First down. boy it's a good thing they didn't have 11 it had been six it might have been a touchdown you're right <laughs> Very, what a, very cagey of defensive coordinator. What a, <laughs> what a beautifully set up screen, though, by oh. the Dallas Cowboys to the left side. Picture perfect. 11, 12, 13 guys. You think there's some domination going on here? Well, we have to assume uh, both legs were the same infraction, even though they were thrown 17 yards apart at the 18 yard line. Emmett Smith takes it inside the 15. He's tackled by Corey Whitmer with 5.05 to go. In the first half, 7 3, Dallas. Uh, Cowboys move into that area where those big wide receivers just terrorize your cornerbacks. There's Mike Nolan. And I'm sure Mike Nolan and everybody in that giant defensive huddle oh, no. is well aware of the fact that they are pressed right into a corner. This is a football team that can't afford to fall behind Dallas 14 to 3. They need a big play and they need it badly. Movement. Play stoppage. Well, how many times have we said it? Well, John Elway, Troy Aikman has a good hard count. He goes soft for a long period of time and then gets you into a situation like this where you want to pass rush and he gives you that hard count and here you come. Ball start. 73 offense. He even got his own Prior match. Yeah. Snap. Still second down. It's Larry Allen. He's the rookie out of Sonoma State, small school in Northern California's wine country, taking the place of Eric Williams, who was Badly hurt in that auto accident a couple of weeks ago. And he's filling the shoes of probably the best right tackle in the National Football League, and Eric Williams. Take a look at the accuracy of Troy Aikman as he moves down the field and in the red zone, 69% accuracy. He gets better as he gets closer to the promised land. In direct contrast to the rest of the league, Moose Johnston seeks that first down and has it. At about the seven yard line. Yeah, that statistic we just showed you is really remarkable when you consider how much more difficult it is to pass down there as the field gets smaller as you go. His two outside men really help him too. And Michael Irvin and Alvin Harper with Jay Novacek in the game. What an awesome threesome they are. And they watch Johnson. Throw this guy in there too, Frank. <laughs> he, he just looks for a blue jersey to hammer. He knows he's going to get the first down, but he loves to run into people. Johnston is a very dangerous receiver on his team as well. There's Irvin lined up to the left. First and goal at the six. This is the 11th play of the drive. And it's Hammond Smith who tripped and gets to the three-yard line. Oh, he just slipped looking for that cut. I think you got a good look at it. What he saw, he wanted to plant that right foot, slash it back. He would have been in the end zone, yeah. only he slipped. I think he saw a real good shot at it. Take a quick look again. He sees a little gap. He tries to take it back right through that little hole there. Loses his footing behind the block of Nate Newton. Yeah, he almost ran into Newton. I think that was what caused him to make that 
I think maybe a little more severe move back to the inside than he wanted to. He found himself crawling right up the back of Nate Newton. And what a sizable back that is. Dallas takes a timeout. Second and goal at the three. 3.13 left in the half. Cowboys by four. Dealers are ready. Are the bills overdue? A big bang's coming Monday night between these two. Three thirteen remaining in the first half. The Cowboys, after the timeout, have it second and goal at the giant three-yard line. Dallas up 7-3. Michael Brooks there trying to get his guys fired up. Oh, Cowboys come up in the eye. Johnston is the fullback. Smith the tailback. Urban left, Hopper right. Emmett. Ooh, Emmett does not get there. It is Eric Howard who, for the moment, saves the touchdown. Third and goal. Pretty good job by Eric Howard who stood right in there and then the entire giant defense comes in there and, and all gets a shoulder on it. Smith now with 16 carries and a half. <laughs> Following the lead block again of Johnson. And Eric Howard hangs in there strong, gets a little support. Coming up there is Tito Wooten. 22 will go again. Third and goal, and there he goes for his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. Tommy Agee led the way, the fullback for Emmett Smith. 17 carries tonight for E. Smith. Cowboys go 80 yards in 13 plays. Jim Brown is the other player in NFL history with 10 or more TDs in each of his first five seasons. Brown did it in his first seven, and Emmett Smith tonight with 10 TDs for the fifth consecutive season. Well, Tommy Agee's the motion man. Daryl Johnston makes the key block that puts him in the end zone. This is a football team with a whole bunch of good football players. They just come at you in pain. They are good. Seven, the Cowboys put the Bills away with a pair of touchdown passes at the end of the first half. Stay tuned to see how planning made the difference. Never. Fifth of the Washington are tough. Iran to kick. Kevin Williams to return it. Fair catch is called for. 42 yard kick. Kevin Williams hauls it into the 25 yard line, and so Aikman will go to work with a minute and 46 and two timeouts at his disposal. Well, you wouldn't be watching this game if you didn't realize that a minute 46 for Troy Aikman and the tools at his disposal, along with a couple of timeouts, is more than enough for the Cowboys to add to their lead. Beautiful shot there of Texas Stadium here in Irving. Gary Jones has his way. Yep. Well, that shot will be history someday. This place will look more like Azteca Stadium in Mexico City than it will. Got to go up with it and down with it and <laughs> close it up. Panels opening and closing. I believe the up, down, all around applies. We'll talk about that in detail in the second half as Emmett Smith goes nowhere. He wants to increase the capacity here, does Jerry Jones, to 105,000. <laughs> Theme park, a memorabilia, Cowboys memorabilia area. Guy acts like he's got a pretty good ball club here. So. Yeah. <laughs> Second and ten. Here's Aikman, dumps it off underneath. Emmett Smith breaks an ankle tackle and then goes out of bounds up at the 32 yard line. And there is Jerry Jones, and he'll be uh, part of our halftime format tonight. Had a chance to visit with him yesterday, and you'll hear from the very proud owner. Now, he got the idea to expand this when we were in Azteca Stadium in Mexico City in the middle of August. That was the shot we provided that night from the helicopter. And he wants to literally raise the roof here at Texas Stadium and uh, add 40,000 seats in an upper deck. And there it is, Texas Stadium. And by 1999, if he has his way, they'll have 105,000 seats in here. On third and three, it's Emmett Smith, and he's tackled before he can get the first down by Jesse Campbell. But because of the forward progress rule, the clock still runs. He's ruled inbounds, and now the Giants take a timeout. 
So it'll be fourth and one. Timeout New York with 108 remaining in the opening half. Berger, Peter King in New York and then uh, the aforementioned chat with the owner of the Dallas Cowboys Jerry Jones who bought the team for in effect 140 million dollars in late 1988 and uh, who knows what this franchise is worth right now hmm. might be the most valuable franchise in all the professional sports the kick certainly is when you're winning yeah John Jett to kick. Dave Megan has run back six punts in his illustrious career for touchdowns, but this one will be fair caught. That's a beautiful kick as Jett not only kicked it deep, but pinned Megan near the sideline at the 18, a 48 yard boot. Beauty. As Mike Nolan, the defensive coordinator who we misidentified a short while ago, he's up in the Upstairs in the booth, his dad was with him a moment ago. Dick Nolan, the former Giant player, teammate of mine, and a Dallas Cowboy scout, the former head coach in the league. But Mike Nolan, who many thinks, many think will move along in his career and become a head coach, he's a capable young man. He's trying to get a head start down to the locker room here while the offense has the ball. He better hope the offense doesn't uh, turn it over. You'll see a guy sprinting back to his <laughs> position there. I knew that little guy when he was growing up at Yankee Stadium. His dad used to bring him to practice when I bring my son Jeff. Boy, they used to really play tough. Giants at the 18. They have all three timeouts. Brown and Megan drops it. Megan over the middle. Simply dropped it. Second down. Giants have Giants have two timeouts left. They took one uh, on the fourth and one defensively. Dave Brown. Remember he came out of Duke early. Went into the supplemental draft. He's two for 13, and then he sat on the bench for two years. Would have sat on the bench again this year had Phil Sims come back. Keep in mind those numbers. They're against the number one pass defensive team in the National Football League. They have only allowed 165 yards a game passing, and it looks like they're about to reduce that number. Second and ten. Just tremendous pressure. They never blitz. They never no. have to. They just keep on coming. It's Colbert and Chad Hennings. You know, and they get the coverage downfield too. There was time to dump it off, but no, no underneath man to dump it off too. They're trying to go up, up topside. Dan, they've just good coverage. Keep in mind again that pocket is collapsing with only a three-man rush. Again, the Cowboys only rush three guys and put Dave Brown on the ground. And now Dallas, thinking it will get the ball back, takes some time out. Former offensive lineman, when you gave up a sack to only a three-man rush, you really, you had your dauber down about as far as it'll go. And the Giants tonight have given up two, maybe even three sacks to only a legitimate three-man rush. Third and 15, the Cowboys took that last time out to conserve time. They have one remaining. 46 ticks left on the clock. Oh, Brown has to dump it off to Meggett. He gets a block. He scoots out past the 20. Gets banged down at the 23, but is considerably shy of the first down. And now Dallas takes a timeout again to stop the clock on fourth down. 34 seconds remain. Dallas does not have a timeout left. Yeah, those few yards may be precious ones for the Giants. The Cowboys taking these timeouts because they figure they had time to get the ball back into field goal range. Or for that matter, get a deep one off to either Harper or Irvin. And you again see the pressure on Dave Brown. Sacked 27 times, but boy, how many times has he been hit this year? When the Cowboys get it back after this Haran punt to Kevin Williams. What a kick. A beauty again. Williams at the 22 yard line. And he is out of bounds at about the 30. Derek Brown runs him out. 22 seconds. 54 yards. Iran having a big night, eight yard return. Well, I think they measured the hang time of that thing with a with a sand dial, a sand timer rather. <laughs> that thing, uh, sundial, sand timer, egg timer. Who, you know what I mean. I know. Uh, the, the thing you turn upside down. Yeah, it almost went through the hole in the roof. Almost he, blocked by uh, Joe Fishback. They're Dallas now. They got a bit of a problem. They had to use their timeouts to get the ball back. They have 22 seconds. They got to take something downfield deep. 
good acting they don't there have by a lot of time to work the ball downfield. They got to take something deep, and the Giants may give them that. They've been laying off that too deep zone and giving them a lot of room to roam right in the middle. Cowboys without a timeout. They lead by 11. Aikman fires, and it's Irvin making the catch at the 48, but they can't stop the clock. Now Aikman's going to have to come out and down it I would, at this point, even if they can uh, get that play off. They lost about five seconds yeah. with somebody shooting the ball all the way across yeah. the field. I don't know who gave that ball a good pitch, but uh, it was advantageous to the New York Giants. Oh, actually, I think it was Michael Irvin himself who tossed the ball, and it uh, it kept on rolling. Took a carpet bounce, and it did cost the Cowboys a few seconds. And now, they almost got to throw this one up for uh, looking for the penalty down around yep. the end zone. Well, I, if you're going to toss one up in the air, I'd be looking towards Alvin Harper. Well, it's, it's looking <laughs> to the left-hand side. You've got trips. You've got Williams. You've got Irvin. You've got Harper, and you got Aikman throwing in that direction. It's a jump ball. And it's knocked down. And the Cowboys want a flag, and Irvin is screaming at the side judge. Jarvis Williams knocks it down. This is an exciting play. It's become a major part of football. And we've got an injury. Obviously a dangerous one. Yeah, we've got a guy who's still down for the Giants in the end zone, I believe. All right, here's Harper, number 80. Harper is a high jumper out of Tennessee. He does get seven. hit. Three. He really does get hit. He gets hit by number 29, Tito Wooten. He's going to the locker room, so that takes care of that. So the half ends. In the half, Dallas outgains the Giants 252 to 45. Another look. The Cowboys go into the locker room up by 11. That's interference. And there's a fight on the field here before we go to a break as all of a sudden this breaks out. Look out. Look at this. And you've got... Boy, and those are Jarvis Williams was right in the middle of it. I know that. And there are a Next bunch of, I believe, high school cheerleaders down there getting ready to come onto the field. And I don't think this is quite what they expected to have happen right in front of them. And there's Charles Haley, the peacemaker. Uh, you would hope. Well, this isn't settled yet. The teams exit in through different tunnels, but on the same side of the field. Well, I, the Cowboys are upset because there is no question Tito Wooten should have been flagged for interference. The only thing dumber in fighting on a football field is fighting on a football without a helmet. No, the, the fight is stupid. And Alvin Harper that, is shaken up. There he is. He's hurt. He is hurt. And that's the way the half ends, bizarrely. And that's, you wonder what the officials, obviously they weren't looking at that collision. Because that was very legitimate interference. 14-3 at the half. Back we come after this work from our ABC station. By Tito Wooten. Wooten, and we'll look at that right after the kickoff. Here is the second half kickoff. Brad Dalweso sends it into the corner. Good kick. Yeah, Kevin Williams at the one. And he finds room up the sideline and is finally taken down by... Corey Raymond in the report now on Harper as we'll take a look at him here. Sprain knee. He's from the left. He gets hit in the air by Tito Wooten. Watch his left knee. He comes down and he hits it quite hard right on this hard astroturf right there. You see the left knee. It hits the turf pretty hard and then he gets rolled up after that. I think it was the roll up Dan that probably hurt the knee more than coming down on it. It's hard to tell Frank. It's, it's hard to see what happened in that melee afterwards. No penalties were assessed. And the teams finally went up their respective tunnels. Here's Johnny Greer who gets a little feedback on his referee's microphone. He's looking skyward. He's looking at, well, they had to, uh, they lowered uh, that apparatus for the halftime ceremony, and now they have to raise it. It's, it's a pretty good idea. <laughs> and I would not be standing underneath it mm. while they raised it. I mean, Mike Coran has been kicking tonight. They better get it up there. So... Again, the official word is that Alvin Harper has a sprained left knee. We do not know whether he'll be back or not. Chances are he probably will not be. Well, they're getting thin in receivers. Yeah. Jay Novacek is out of the lineup. Mm -hmm. The stomach injury, and but the big man, Michael Irvin, is still there. Well, there are only other wide receivers in the ballgame right now. Kevin Williams, who returned that kickoff. And here is Emmett Smith, and sometimes he's all you need. He takes it to the Giant. 45-yard line, tackled by John Booty. Oh, that is Vinny Jimmett Smith. 
Give it a little head shake to the outside. Break it back to the inside. Always looking for the inside cut. So Kevin Williams will pick up the slack now with Harper gone. Getting a good block by Larry Allen, the rookie on the right side against Keith Hamilton. Now watch this slash for about three or four more yards back to the inside. Dallas leading 14-3. Two touchdown favorites coming in. And Emmett Smith probes the middle and doesn't go very far. Eric Howard is there to help break it up. Smith picks up a couple. The Cowboys have a couple of youngsters at the wide receiver position, but they're inactive for tonight's game. Corey Fleming and Willie Jackson, two guys that are on the Cowboys roster but are normally inactive as Barry Switzer chooses to dress only three receivers, Irvin, Harper, and Williams. Williams has played in their three wide receiver set and only had seven receptions coming into tonight. Well, he's a good receiver, particularly good on the short routes when he can run after he catches the ball. Second and seven. Beautiful block thrown by Smith. Johnston makes the catch. He's at the 38. It'll be third down and three. Emmett does everything. Stayed in the, I think it was Michael Brooks he upends uh, here as he stays in the block for Aikman. And Johnson with another reception short of the first down by, well, by about a yard. One thing about Emmett's block, when you are low, it's easy to go low. <laughs> when you're only 5'9 to start with, you've got pretty good leverage. And that time Emmett Smith did a nice job of chopping Brooks right down. Ron Stone is in at guard replacing Derek Kennard. It's third down and two. And the corner on that side forced to run all the way down the field got some was late a, help from John Booty he was man for man on yeah. the outside he just got beat right at the line of scrimmage he tried tried to play bump and run with one of the best in the business he didn't even get a hit and Irvin just flows by Raymond he's looking for help from the inside Booty late there but that's Corey Raymond all the way his problem you know what gets lost in us concentrating so much on the Cowboy receivers is the absolute pinpoint accuracy of the balls delivered by Troy Aikman. Michael Irvin uh, has gone back down to a knee as well, he was looking uh, at him now. attempting to get, get up and head back towards the Cowboy bench. Yeah, Barry Switzer. Boy, it must be fun to uh, coach guys with that kind of talent. Boy, and a sigh of relief. You can hear all the way up to the booth from this crowd as Michael Irvin slow in getting up. But could you could you possibly have placed the football in any better mm. position than Troy Aikman delivered that? And that's well, lace it up, I think, Dan. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> with the Paul Tagliabue label, you know, just come on, that was absolutely perfect. I guess that's the uh, fourth 100-yard plus receiving game for Michael Irvin so far here in the '94 season. And on the subject of 100 yards, Emmett Smith has reached the century mark well, as well tonight on his 20 carries, and he might get his 21st right here. Chances are, chances are. The Moose will lead block. And there's Emmett. Touchdown Dallas. A cute little hop into the end zone. He was looking for somebody to hit him. 101. Big opening. Good drive blocked by Kennard. Larry Allen coming down from the right side. Dale Hellestray in there at the right guard position. Stepnowski at the center. The rookie, Larry Allen. But of course, the big lead block by Daryl Johnston. And that's about as easy as it gets for a running back. You could have taken that in. Yeah. Chris Monio to the point after. Irvin takes it to the one. Emmett brings it home. Dallas 21, New York 3. Well, let's play a little game. Who's winning and who's losing? <laughs> 112 rushing yards for the Cowboys. That man has 101 of them. Daryl Johnston has carried one time too. for three, and this guy, Troy Aikman, has carried one time for eight yards. 21 to three. The Cowboys on their way to going eight and one. Best record in the league. There's a look at Bill Bates on the coverage. Monio floats it down to the two-yard line. David Leggett behind a wall of blockers. Out to the 26-yard line. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by the totally new 
Ford Contour, a world car for the 21st century. Merrill Lynch for our clients. The difference is planning. The difference is Merrill Lynch and Miller Lite. Expect great things. That's what Dallas expects. It's a live shot. That's beautiful. Reunion Center in downtown Dallas, and the buildings all lit up beautifully on a sparkling night. The weather here has been, in the word, spectacular over the last couple of days. 70 degrees around that during the daytime with very low humidity. First down at the 26 yard line. Ronnie Hampton runs right into Leon Rett and Charles Haley. Doesn't appear to be much of a letdown here, even though they're protecting a lead. And Al used the word sparkling to describe the Dallas skyline, and I think that's a pretty good choice of words, Al. That is a, a live shot from the chopper. That's certainly not a letdown on that play. And talk about non-sparkling <laughs> or just plain flat. <laughs> the Giants in that kind of night, that kind of six-game losing streak. Rodney Hampton tackled by Jones and Smith. Defensively, we talked about the Cowboys and their offensive weapons. Uh, defensively, they are also playing back to their 1992 season when they were the number one defensive team in the league. They were second overall after eight games, ninth against the rush, first against the pass. And this is a, a great football team on both sides of the ball. And I'm sure a lot of San Diego, other San Francisco 49ers are looking on at this one tonight. Let's see how many guys Dallas rushes here. Third and eight, more than they normally do. Blitz is on, and Brown floats it and then throws too high, intended for Aaron Pierce, and is a flag down. At the line of scrimmage. Pierce was complaining that he was held coming off the line of scrimmage. I think the Cowboys might have been in that neutral zone. They were. Cowboys face the 49ers next week. Could have a lot of implications. Defense. Dallas. Biggest offseason news, of course, was made right here. It's amazing, and I, in a way, I think you, you really have to start paying a little bit more tribute to, to Barry Switzer because he, he's a guy who really had everything to lose and not a heck of a lot to gain. It's sort of Jimmy Johnson's team, but he has really kept it together just beautifully. Right on track. Either that or head coach is not a very tough job. Here's Meggett. He picks up a half a yard. A punting situation will ensue, and Russell Maryland makes the tackle. And you know what? I think this goes back to, again, what we talked about earlier, about what Barry Switzer told us, about what wonderful football character this team has and how hard they work. And this is a football team that is on the on their way to winning six in a row. They're leading 21 to three. And look at the enthusiasm with which they are still playing this game. Mm -hmm. That is uncommon and it is very impressive. And Barry Switzer had the good sense not to mess with that. No, he only brought in one assistant coach to replace Norv Turner, and that was one of the best in the business, Ernie Zampezi. That's Horan. He's the only giant having a very good night. Fair caught oh, by Williams at the 21, a 46 yard move. Beautiful Big D on a Monday night in November. The Cowboys up by 18. Funny woman. Yep. At the 21 uh, yard line. Cowboys, Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith seeking a fourth consecutive rushing title. It's going to be tough. He'll need probably the same kind of break he got last year when Barry Sanders was hurt and uh, missed the last four or five games and Emmett was able to come on and win it again. You know, one thing about the Cowboys, and there they are with Emmett 104 yards, they blow out so many opponents that Emmett doesn't get to pick up some of that yardage in the fourth quarter that other running backs would. But he is very much aware of the yardage totals of the other good running backs in this league. He charts them week to week, and it's not something he takes for granted. He wants to win number four. Moose Johnston, first down, up to the 35-yard line, tackled by Bailey and Miller. What a weapon Johnston is. He just comes out on this little pass pattern. When there's no blitz, he has no one to pick up. He just goes across the line of scrimmage and kind of move, move, maneuvers back and forth until Eggman finds him. Aikman takes a look downfield. Nobody there. He knows Johnston's going to be open. And he just rumbles for the first down, covering up the football. 
Well, he becomes all the more important given the fact that Alvin Harper still hurt out of the lineup. Jay Novacek not playing from the line of scrimmage today. From the 35 yard line, Aikman throws, catch made. Scott Galbraith, who's now caught two more than a dead man. Four yard pickup up to the 39 yard line. And four for the you season. Better, you better explain that quote. We used it in the first half. That's Barry Switzer's line. <laughs> Galbraith filling in for Jay Novacek, the ex Cardinal right there. Let go a plan B free agent signed by the Dallas Cowboys back in 90. What a good move that was. Yeah. Yeah, the Cardinals chose not to protect Jay, figuring he didn't have, I guess, a lot of football left in him. Well, if you missed it earlier, uh, Barry said yesterday Galbraith would catch one more than a dead man. He's made two receptions tonight, second and six. And then Matt Smith is off for the race. John Booty will run him out of bounds at the 33-yard line. It's inevitable, isn't it? Just like Barry Sanders, just like Thurman Thomas, just like any of the other really good running backs in this league. You throw him up into that line enough times, Frank, and he'll break one. A little quick read right here. Pops up, gets away from an attempted tackle by Jarvis Williams. Juked him pretty good. Williams didn't even go for the tackle. 28 yard gain for Emmett Smith, who's rushed for more than 100 yards in each of his last four games against the Giants. And no gain here. Jarvis Williams has limped off yep. of the field. I don't know whether that was bothering him before on the play before when he missed the tackle or missed the attempt of a tackle. And they're looking at him on the sidelines. Now, uh, Dallas Cowboy is slow getting up. That is, uh, that's Nate Newton. Ooh, and they were already minus Kennard, and you know about Eric Williams, and they're going to go into that San Francisco game a little banged up on Nate, that offensive line. Nate's got a bad ankle. He came into the game nicked. He didn't practice except one or two days this week, and uh, the big we man still hurt. First down tally and the score are the same. <laughs> Nate Newton has to come off for at least one play. One of the really likable guys in this game, not to mention a formidable force on the offensive mm. line. He runs, great straight ahead drive blocker, excellent pass protector. Second and 10 at the 33. Yeah, Troy oh. Banks throws. Ooh, Williams makes a great catch and withstands that hard hit by Campbell. First down at the 11 yard line. 22 yard pickup. Splitting the zone. And Kevin Williams filling in for the injured Alvin Harper. Read it pretty good, too. Got in between, slowed up. Aikman with a little pump fake and slow getting over was Jesse Campbell. He puts a big hit on Williams, but Williams holds on. Nate Newton is back in the game, first and 10 at the 11. Nate's got one of those ankles, Dan, that will come and go for a long time. Yeah. It won't be better till the offseason. Emmett Smith. To the seven and a half. Let's face it, Nate puts a little uh, strain on that ankle just walking from the bedroom to the kitchen. <laughs> He's over that left side with Mark Tune. They hail back to the Tom Landry, Tex Schramm, Gil Brandt days. Still a little touch of the old Dallas Cowboys working on that left side. Tune, a 12 year veteran, and Nate Newton now in his ninth season. Second and six. Six minutes to go, third quarter. Cowboys lead by 18. Cowboys force the Giants to come across the line, but Aikman throws it away. Flags are down. Aikman with that hard count, and Giants moving. Johnny Greer indicating it's against the Giants, and half of this is to the goal line. I don't know how you're covering that, but I'll tell you, all the good quarterbacks have it. I think John Elway maybe is the best at it. Aikman is right there with him. Offside, 91, defense. Still second down. Coleman Rudolph lined up across from Mark Tuane, and Dan Reeves has been watching this for six weeks now. Hmm. Dan Reeves on the other side of destruction. Course. Reeves who played with the Cowboys and assistant coach they continue to work on Jarvis Williams. He was their leading rusher one year down here wasn't he yep. back in the 60s. He was 
Spent a long time on Landry's staff, and Reeves is still just 50 years old and his 14th year as a head coach. Here's Emmett looking for the hat trick, but Corey Miller hog ties him at the three yard line. Ooh, I didn't, I didn't yeah. think Miller was going to be able to make that play. Pretty doggone good move by Corey Miller. Getting outside, I thought Emmett Smith was going to get around that corner. Good burst by Miller. Watch this. Miller's got some quickness. They used him a lot in the blitz. And Taylor was hurt a couple of years ago. Good move to the outside. Mm -hmm. He fought off the block of Galbraith and uh, kept contained and chased down Emmett. A quality play there by Miller. Third and a short two just inside the three. They can't get a first down without a touchdown. Smith the tailback. That's Tommy Ag in motion. Here's the fake. Aikman on a roll. Troy looking for the end zone. He's in there. See, there's that's off the same formation that they've been hammering at the Giants with all night long. AG in motion. The I formation with Johnston at fullback, Emmett Smith. There's a play designed to send a message to San Francisco. <laughs> Better work on this all week long. And by the way, guys, you better stay home on the back side. Because this is what happens. This little is fake, what happens when you don't. Little fake to Emmett Smith. You get the hesitation on the part of the defense. And this time, Corey Miller doesn't get there. No. No. Beautiful work by the Cowboys. Ernie Zampezi in setting up that entire scenario. Boniel tax on the extra point. Two teams going in opposite directions. Cowboys going west to Candlestick. Giants looking at 1995, and now the debut of a new series of features looking at NFL history from a different perspective, the football's point of view. It starts with last Thanksgiving's infamously on left play that gave the Miami Dolphins a second chance to beat the Cowboys. MGM presents Great Moments in NFL Football starring the Leatherheads. It's never too cold, it's never too rough. 41 yards will kick their butts. Let's go, Stoyanovic. We gotta regroup. Hey, Leon! Grab hold of my pink skin, and this game will not end. I'm jamming my naces right into your faces. Okay, man, kick it again. Through the post of your toast. Tobias, you got style. Dallas on top, 28 to 3, 502 to go in the third quarter. Chris Bonior. Down to the three yard line. This is Thomas Lewis. Up to the 27. It's been a scintillating night in almost every respect for the Cowboys, but not one. Let's get an update from Lynn Swan. Swanee? Al, after a further examination by the doctor and an x ray on Alvin Harper's left knee, they believe that it's a possible ACL anterior cruciate ligament tear. They will take an MRI tomorrow to see if they can confirm that. When I talked to Alvin in the locker room, he said he came down on it to twist it like an ankle would twist and sprain, but it was his knee. Uh, he feels like he might be able to come back because he was up and walking around on it, but I don't think he may be back that soon. Al? Well, there's the play. It's a hit by Tito Wooten, number 29. Look at the left leg of Alvin Harper. He comes down and, and, and thuds on that left knee. We can't see if anything happens to it after he's already in the end zone. Meanwhile, Thomas Lewis, the return man on that kickoff return for the Giants, he has not gotten up. He's down on the field, and he's obviously in pain. We'll be back to Dallas in a minute. The world champion Dallas Cowboys, MVP of Super Bowl 28 in the NFL. It's always a team effort that wins in the NFL, and it takes a team effort to be a winner in your community, whether it's here in Dallas or in your hometown. That winning team is the United Way. Right here in Dallas, we're helping people who really need our help. Through more than 100 agencies and programs, assuring your contribution is being spent wisely. These are the real MVPs, the most valuable people here in Dallas. How you doing? The list of people who need our help is long, but through the United Way agencies and programs, we can create an offense and a defensive line that can reach people who really need our help through the Salvation Army, and so many more. United Way, reaching those who need help, touching us all. Yeah! This message furnished by the National Football League. Giants number one draft pick, Thomas Lewis, being attended to. That's Dr. Russell Warren there and Ronnie Barnes, the trainer, helping Lewis off the field. Maybe you can get a look at 
the cowboy just falling on his left leg and he was in obvious pain and agony and then he did get himself pulled together and they've assisted him through the sideline we'll get a report on him Giants have it first and 10 of 27 they trail 28 to 3 Dave Brown to Rodney Hampton and the Cowboys just keep on coming Dixon Edwards is there to bang him down behind the line of scrimmage now let's go back and take one more look at that Alvin Harper play and again we don't know the severity of the injury but here here it was at the end of the first half well, you're so vulnerable when you go up like that and Tito Wooten hit him actually as he went up before the ball got there and it didn't look that bad he grabbed the knee though as soon as the unpiled if you didn't see the play there was no flag even though Wooten should have been called for the interference that was the last play of the first half second and 11 and Brown throws and that's tipped and James Washington picks it up on a hop incomplete Callaway covered by Kevin Smith third down Giants tonight on their seven possessions have been three and out on five of them that time I think in an effort to protect Dave Brown there were only two Giants in that pattern one of them being Aaron Pierce and not too difficult to cover Dave Brown had locked eyes with Pierce as he moved over the middle and that attracted quite a crowd look at this folks 46 total yards a little over four minutes left in the third quarter and the Giants don't even have 50 yards in offense third and 11 Brown flag goes down he hits Callaway Callaway had a first down we've got this will almost certainly be holding it. It is against the Giants. Dan Reeves will watch his team go down to a sixth consecutive defeat. They go home to face Arizona next week. Holding 59 offense. Still third down. One of the stories in New York this week was uh, the Giants and what happened in the offseason and Dan Reeves who's a very honest guy said we just didn't handle the offseason very well meaning the salary cap quite in contrast to the way the Dallas Cowboys have handled the salary cap situation a lot of people thought it was Reeves taking a shot at George Young Dan denied that he said hey look I'm a part of this too we just we didn't handle the offseason properly a giant giant brain right. trust. and he constantly used the word we so he wasn't pointing fingers so much he was just frustrated of what's happened third and 21 and the catch is made by <laughs> Arthur Marshall nice play up at the 36 yard line yeah, that ball was absolutely perfectly thrown and what a great catch over one defender and in front of another they might have just increased their offensive out output by about 50 percent that's a beautiful throw as you say Frank Brock Marion a little late coming over there and especially when you consider that's against an eight man secondary that's knocked down getting an arm that's over intended. is Darren Woodson uh, bust up the play second down well the Giants in that salary cap checking out the, the, the figures you know that they have spent 35 percent of their allotted money on their Some offensive down. line yeah. alone yeah. and 13 players get 58 percent of the cap. Keep in mind, this is a team that lost three of their starting secondary players: Mark Collins, Myron Guyton, and Greg Jackson, and a fourth into retirement, yeah. Larry Williams. Three guys out of the offensive line: Lewis Tillman, their quality backup running back, plus a couple guys named Taylor and Sin. Brown loses a, the football. That's, that's a fumble. A live football. That's a fumble. Jackson Edwards is on the loose, and after the play was stopped momentarily, and everybody just stood around. He takes it to the 24 yard line. The strip was created by Chad Hennings and Reeves with that perplexed look can't figure out what's happened. The Brown was complaining that his arm was in motion. He's not going to get the call though. He's going to be ruled a fumble and a recovery. Well this is a downtrodden Giants offensive team. Let's take a look at it. Brown is on the move. There is the arm going back and there's the ball knocked out. That is a fumble all the way. Uh, an excellent call by the officials. Well, a non call. Chad Hennings, he's been around the quarterback all night tonight. Boy, and that's when it goes bad, it goes really bad. 
First down of the 25. And Emmett Smith picks up at six. Big, big night for Emmett Smith to the 19-yard line. Under three minutes to go in the in the third, and the woes continued for the New York Giants as Thomas Lewis, Lewis goes back. Boy, big night for Chad Hennings. Former Air Force player, and boy, he is a guy who's really blossomed. A couple years ago, Cowboys weren't sure if he was really going to be the guy. Saw Kent Graham warming up there, but Chad Hennings has really come on strong. And it to the 17. What a pick he was, too. 11th round, 88. He had to serve his time in the military before he came back. He came back and kind of undersized, even at 6'6 and about 250. He's up to almost 290 now. And the Cowboys needed him to come on strong. They lost Tony Casillas. They lost Jimmy Jones, two mm -hmm. quality defensive linemen, which was really the strength of this football team, how deep they were on the defensive line. Hennings was kind of a question mark. Well, no longer. They are able to do what they did a year ago, and that is rotate always keeping fresh defensive linemen in there and Craig Janoff our director gives us a look at their number one draft choice there Shante Carver third a yard and a half and Emmett Smith I believe picks it up As we widen out to see the stick 15 yard line Jesse Armstead makes the tackle Kent Graham will come in he and Dave Brown when the preseason schedule began were neck and neck trying to become number one and then after a couple of weeks Reeves made the decision it's Brown but now Graham loosening up fourth down the crowd wants the cowpokes to go for it and of course Perry Switzer will oblige 115 to go in the third quarter They've, every fourth down they've gone on they've made this season this must have been what the Coliseum sounded like <laughs> Emmett Smith takes it to the nine yard line but no, the Lions were here in September. <laughs> I'm not talking about the Los Angeles Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> Emmett Smith of the night. <laughs> Emmett probably, I would imagine, he's seeing his last action of the night because if they go in, it'll be 35. To, there it is to the moment. He's moved into second place. Sanders on top, then Smith, Natron Means, and Marshall Falk. And Falk has one more game, does he not? Yep, he does. They get their bye this week. The Moose! <laughs> Into the end zone. The Moose has carried the ball about 170 times counting tonight. His longest run, 14 yards, and he didn't he didn't break that mark tonight. That was from 10 yards out. I think Emmett Smith would be the first guy to say he deserves that the way he's been lead blocking for me tonight. This has been Tough night to be in the blue, the big blue. Total and utter domination by the Cowboys tonight. Look at that blocking. That's just textbook, just perfect. Two and a number 71 coming all the way from left tackle. Johnson's first rushing touchdown and third touchdown overall of the season. 29 ticks left in the third. Cowboys in a romp. 35-3. And Mark Tuane there, one of the really under publicized members of that offensive line who's been doing it for a long long time <laughs> look at that he's election night yeah native hawaiian and uh yeah i didn't know he was running with <laughs> everybody either <laughs> don't forget college football coming up this saturday on abc and uh double header here Notre Dame against Florida State in the first game at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Da, 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 da. Regional <laughs> action, Penn State number two against Illinois, Arizona and the Trojans, Alabama, Mississippi State, Baylor Rice. You'll see one of those games if you'd rather see another. Oh, you're a cable operator for the pay-per-view option. Frank, you'll be buying that Arizona-USC game. Oh, you? yeah. Well, you will, I will, as a matter of fact. We'll be buying it. That one Monday night, Buffalo and Pittsburgh. Tomorrow's election. Dan, you were running for in the preseason. We were in Buffalo. They wanted you to what? Run for mayor of Mumford, New York. Mumford, New York. Yes. I love. I love your, your, your. You were running on a campaign of read my lips, retroactive tax cuts. I, I thought you were. I told them that if I was chosen, I would serve. <laughs> I was actually running on a. But I think. They, goodness. I think they finally thought about it. <laughs> and running decided against, running against the incumbent. Yeah, I presume. Best to. Uh, Best to wait for my campaign for another year. <laughs> Election coverage tonight, though, or tomorrow night, rather, right here on ABC. David Brinkley, Peter Jennings. Tune in and find out who won and who lost. And I think 
that's already been decided here tonight in I, Dallas. I believe so. At the seven yard line, David Meggett running back the colonial kick, and that's a beautiful tackle by Brock Marion. Dan talking about election coverage tomorrow night in our primetime line. On the East Coast, they may be in early. <laughs> Kent Graham coming in after Dave Brown went four for 17 at the 23 yard line and making his first carry of the night is Gary Downs the rookie out of North Carolina State Brown had taken every snap this season for the Giants he and Randall Cunningham were the only quarterbacks to have taken every snap for their team this season now Brown's out Graham's in Graham in a couple of years with the Giants an eighth round draft pick out of Ohio State. 119 attempts, 42 percent. I think it's safe to say that Dave Brown remains the Giants' starting quarterback. End of three, 35 to three, Dallas. Back we come with Monday Night Football after this from ABC Station. Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, Lynn Swan reporting as the Dallas Cowboys are thrashing. The New York Giants 35 3 the fourth quarter commences and Kent Graham in there for the gents at the 25 yard line second down and eight Dallas after a 21 point third quarter and off his back foot he has it picked off and James Washington the Super Bowl star picks it off for the Cowboys at the 37 yard line Charles Haley nothing new but I think Charles Haley was right in Graham's face and the guy was knocking him backwards the most disruptive defensive end in the game of football Charles Haley still at it and James Washington's the beneficiary Charles Haley going against Jumbo Elliott. Jumbo's really done a nice job against Haley tonight, but that's just really uncommon power for a man his size. And it's the offensive tackle's nightmare. You block a guy pretty solidly all night long, and then one sack, and all of a sudden you're the GOAT. Rodney Pete is the new quarterback, but Emmett Smith is uh, the same tailback. And there is Rodney, the former Lion, who came in here when Bernie Kosar, who was the backup last year, opted to go to Miami and Rodney was able to lead them to a win against the Cardinals in Tempe uh, recently when Aikman went down with his concussion. He had some good games. Uh, 47 times he started for Detroit, and then he tore his Achilles tendon up. A, a draft pick of the Detroit Lions, a sixth round pick in '89, the same year that this guy, Troy Aikman, was a first round pick here in Dallas. Second and seven at the 36 yard line, and a little. Uh, the problem there is Emmett Smith takes it to the 30 yard line but even when they have problems they pick up six yards yeah they better put that play in and Emmett can't avoid picking up six. <laughs> look at them laughing they, I don't know what went wrong but that that it was not drawn up that way and Emmett said hey I like that six yards let's put it in hey when Barry Switzer said that he was uh, going to get Emmett uh, broken loose tonight and, and let him make up some ground on Barry Sanders I think we're all for it but it's 35 to 3 here They've got a short work week in getting ready to play the San Francisco 49ers. They've got to travel to San Francisco. This is, uh, I didn't expect him to still be in this ball game at this juncture. He's picked up a 165 with those five right there. Well, not always the right thing to do, but I just kind of wonder if he didn't say, they had a little talk on the sideline. We saw them when we were in a way in a commercial. I just wonder if he didn't say, hey, do you want to stay in there or do you want to come out? Here's his backup, Lincoln Coleman. Well, I I don't know whether you should listen to my where you came from Frank but the coach calls the shots on every team I've ever played. Well it, I think that probably is exactly what happened. Oh, I think Barry uh, I don't think Barry said you're coming out and Emmett said no I'm not. I think it's curious though that he's still playing at the 25 yard line and they give it to well he loses five he loses the ball but it's uh, no play. He was down at the 30 yard line. Chris Mamalaga drops him, the rookie out of Kansas. And Texas Stadium with 65,000. Again, if Jerry Jones has his way, and Jerry normally gets his way, he said it'll cost around $125 million. He'll foot part of the bill. 
And he figures to, uh, he said to me yesterday, about, have about 200 meetings over the next couple of years. And maybe by 1999, they'll have 105,000 seats in here. And he said, if we do, and there is Jerry Jones, we'll be in the Super Bowl mix as well. And I bet you they will be to host it. He saw himself on camera. Not short of energy and drive. Here's Smith again. Well, once we, we started to talk about the cap before, you know, we were Jensen in Washington last year. Emma Smith was holding out, and Jerry, he pulled us aside, and he said, I, I want to explain to you what I'm doing here. He said, this salary cap next year is usually important. I have to sign Aikman. I've got to sign Emmett. I've got to think about the whole team, and he's able to sign both of them and remain under the cap, and Emmett now comes out. And he's got, you know, as Dan said, uh, and I can't dispute it at the moment, the best team in the league right now. Yeah, from Dan's lips to Barry Switzer's ears. Well, a pretty good night. 35. <laughs> what did we say at the beginning? Might don't be, get greedy, huh? Might be 26, 28, 30 carries. Went for the club record. Rodney Pete floats one incomplete, intended for Kevin Williams. The game you were talking about in Arizona, Rodney was 12 of 19. A couple of touchdown passes coming off the bench. We Troy went down with that concussion. The ball was tipped, I think, to the Wolf, our producer is telling us. Now, the Cowboys are facing the most difficult scenario in the league, and that mm -hmm. is, you could see it was touched at the line of scrimmage by Mama Longa. Mama but Longa's the, made some plays here. He should have been a little earlier. Here comes a field goal attempt, but, but playing on Monday night and then having to play on the road is the toughest scenario during a regular work week that there is, you know, other than like playing on a Thanksgiving or something like that. And uh, this is a good break for Barry Switzer being able to get some of these guys a rest in the fourth quarter. 45-yard field goal over, over the crossbar, 38-3. Good timing. Second and a four at the 19. Kent Graham throws ooh, and a hard shot taken by Sherrard. He picks up the first down inside the 10. Uh, you touched on it earlier. Sherrard was drafted. He was number one pick in 86. And that was the best year of his professional career. He had 41 receptions and then well, it's hard to believe some of the problems that ensued after that with the broken leg and then fractured it again. He takes a good solid shot there and James Washington who can really put it on you. Well they're sitting they're playing a defense where they're sitting Washington back as kind of a solo safety back there giving him a free run at whomever catches the ball. He'll whack you with it Not without a tripod. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a uh, that's that was an interesting exchange we had there at the end of the first half that a little melee underneath the uh, goalpost. Yeah, I think Washington is going to maintain. But he was only trying to get a close-up. Yeah, you know, one of those moments of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, this right. is your life. <laughs> the serious side of this for the Dallas Cowboys is that Alvin Harper is scheduled for an MRI tomorrow, possibly some ligament damage in his left knee, and uh, Dallas fans will be keeping their fingers crossed to see what happens there. Second and goal, and it's in to cross for the touchdown. Howard Cross. Pretty good drive Kent Graham put together, starting all the way back at his own 25-yard line. Graham, a very much more emotional, much more enthusiastic type quarterback than young Dave Brown. Perhaps both of them have very strong arms. And it was a tough decision on the part of Dan Reeves that he made over in Berlin. As a matter of fact, in the preseason to go with Dave Brown, and he may have another one right now. Well, three Cowboys right around in front, but uh, Cross gets under them into the end zone, and the Cowboys got a late touchdown. Treadwell for the point after with 5:46 remaining in the fourth quarter. That makes it 38 to 10. Good positioning right there at the goal line. Good drive by the Giants. Ken <laughs> Graham getting his first action of the year tonight. Obviously, his first touchdown pass. Good guy. They've had a great battle for this number one spot, and they both handle everything, uh, I mean, uh, in a great way. It was a terrible disappointment when Graham was told he was not going to be the starter. 
And he has said many times, he said, I want to play. He said, I don't want to get a chance to play because anything happens to Dave, they're good friends. He said, but I want to play. I think I can play, and I think I can be a starter in this league. Last three games at Texas Stadium, routes. And this will make uh, 12 straight wins now for the Cowboys against the NFC East. Yeah, this guy's football Ooh. team has routed a few people over the last few years. They're almost tripping on a wire. A dozen consecutive wins there versus their opponents in the NFC East. You can see that that's the uh, the longest one in NFC East history. This is uh, and given the state of the NFC East right now, you'd have to think that. As it currently stands, only the Philadelphia Eagles appear to be a team that's capable of upsetting the Cowboys. I'm not sure that the Giants, Arizona, and the Redskins are, it would take a Herculean effort, to say the least. It'd be a big day in uh, Philadelphia, a big one in December yeah. the 4th when yeah. the Cowboys have to play up there. Giants line up for an onside kick. Oh, Here what gave you that idea? Well. <laughs> You get the feeling that it's going to go to the left, too. It's like the start of the 100 in the Olympics. Yeah. They're offside. The Giants were offside. So even if they recover it, it won't count. I don't no, think it, it won't count. No, the Giants were way offside. Joe Avizano, the special teams coach for the Cowboys, looking on. Joe DeCamelis, the Giants. Special teams coach. Dan, you nailed it. Well, take a look at it right there. The ball has not been struck yet. Even from this far away, it was pretty easy to eyeball. I'm not offside. Kicking team will re kick after the five yard penalty. Well, the Giants doing a lot of mumbling to themselves. They go home, they face Arizona next week. Then they have a Monday night game at Houston. Now you think back uh, over the years with Danny Reeves, he had a similar situation with John Elway when he came into the league as a rookie 12 years ago. And at one point he put down John Elway, and I don't know whether he will decide to go with Kent Graham make a change at quarterback I really don't believe so he seems firmly convinced that Dave Brown is the man so the gents to kick off again and it is a drop by Clayton Holmes and the Giants get it Willie Boy. Beeman comes up with it Clayton Holmes had it right in his hand looked like it hit him right in the chest and bounced off well, they've got this going for him well, so much of this is attributable to the kicker too, and this is really the, well done. The kicker and AstroTurf. The ball always takes that second hop up into the air on its second trip across the AstroTurf, and that uh, you can just count on it. Goes across low, takes a hop, and then whoa, way up into the air. I think Willie Beeman gives Marion a little. <laughs> Leather bopper right in the back. Graham <laughs> <laughs> now from the 34 yard line. Kent just trying to build some confidence at this point, and it's Howard Cross. He's tackled up at the 39. Cowboys go to San Francisco next Sunday. We'll see them on a Monday night game in the December at New Orleans on the night of December 19th. We've got Washington and Green Bay, Philadelphia, Cleveland, New Orleans, and the Giants again on their schedule. Well, we'll see the Giants again in a couple of weeks. Yep, and Houston. Tipped in complete. Cowboys actually will play at Giant Stadium on Christmas Eve. Texas Stadium in Irving. Our thanks to WFAA, our affiliate here, for providing the helicopter, giving us the scenics tonight on a sparkling night in 
North Texas. Chopper one, chopper one. <laughs> How's that traffic look out? No, oh, looks pretty good. Third and four. <laughs> Flags dropped. Callaway couldn't handle it. Johnny Greer will let us know. You know, I think back to. Uh, Let's get a little excitement going here tonight. Let's see if we can fly that helicopter down <laughs> through the hole in the roof. <laughs> yeah. How good are you guys in that thing? 96 <laughs> defense. Well, the NFL. That will be a first down. Celebrating its 75th anniversary. Big dinner scheduled by the league in New York in mid January. And, uh, well. There are uh, that's the uh, the present and future of the National Football League right there. Jerry Jones, Troy Aikman. First down for the Giants. Our invitations are in the mail. It must I be assume. by now. It is caught at the 40. The way for Barry sure. reacted at that, and everybody said, "What in the world is he doing?" And you know, Barry was uh, effusive and exhilarated, and and really carrying on in a way, and it's not. It's not what Barry Switzer really is, but that was not the first impression people had of Barry, but the first they'd had in about five years. And out of bounds is Sherrard. He came across kind of goofy in people's eyes in that press conference, and that is not at all the way Barry really is. He's a very highly intelligent man and a heck of a coach. Barry was reacting the way maybe any of us would have reacted at the most... The, the, you know the most bizarre of circumstances really this is a man who really had resigned himself to never coaching again uh, not on the high school level not on the collegiate level and certainly not in the National Football League and lo and behold within 24 hours he's the coach of the best team on the planet yep I, I don't I don't mind telling you I'd be a little giddy too if that happened to me yeah, yeah, made a little history too the only coach ever to come from the outside to take over a Super Bowl winner had been out what for five years and I think he was sort of resigned that that was just about it and he's already uh, already made a coaching enemy that's good press uh, he and Dave Shula down in Cincinnati not exactly on the uh, well he and Jimmy Johnson are not holding hands either hmm. third and seven at the 39 Barry with that Iowa State comment uh, <laughs> referring to their preparation for the Bengals did not make a uh, did not make a fan of David Shula who had some cross words for Barry as they met at midfield after the Cowboys very narrow victory over the Cowboys last week and David Shula told Barry where to put Iowa State and could uh, his press conference after the game uh, had anything to do with that when he pointed out how good the Cincinnati Bengals were and how could they possibly have lost as many games they've got all these top draft picks Barry Smith has been around a little bit he can bite you on the heel mm -hmm. not easily intimidated yes yeah. fourth down and six I think it's seven at the 39 yard line with 337 to go and the Cowboys showing blitz and they do blitz. Oh, they did. They did. Uh, with the sack. Well, what did we say early, Frank? So on blitzing, timing is everything. Graham thought the Cowboys were offside. Well, you also get into a habit when you're thinking about a lot of things, as the quarterback Kent Graham is, of going on the same count over and over and over. And that is worth taking a shot. If you have a quarterback that repeats the same snap number, Several times over, well, take your chance. Go for it. Last time the Giants lost by 28 or more points in a regular season game, all the way back in 1980. San Diego knocked them off 44 7. The following year, in came Lawrence Taylor, and the Giants were off and running. First down at the 50. As the Cowboys will wrap it up here. Coleman for a yard. You know, the other thing about Barry Switzer we haven't touched on, he's done it his way. Remember, Barry took a little heat earlier in the season when he took off. He flew up to see his son play for Missouri Southern, and everybody said, hey, coach can't do that the night before a game. Or he won every, mother, every mother's heart. Yeah. He made a few friends on that. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens next week. I think everybody in the, everybody in the NFL is, uh, is, is, in tune with what's at stake when the Cowboys play the 49ers uh, and and how the Cowboys play in that game 
will have a lot to do with what people are saying about Barry Switzer down here in Dallas after that game. Coleman picks up about three. Well, the Cowboys are very close to being unbeaten right now. They're only lost that the overtime game, the Monday night game. Barry Sanders had the fabulous night, and that's it. The one thing the Cowboys have done, though, and they've done it the last two years that they were league champions, is they have stayed relatively healthy. Here they are, two weeks ago, they lost the best right tackle in the game of football when they lost Eric Williams, uh, who was injured in a one-car accident. And now tonight, up in limbo, in the air, is, is the status of Alvin Harper, their really extraordinary wide receiver. Uh, those are chinks in what is a formidable piece of armor, but big chinks, uh, sizable holes, and they can't afford many more of those. As good as they are, those are those are wounds that are bleeding and wounds that hurt. As good as they are, and they've rarely been better than tonight. Totally dominant. Two minute warning. 38 10. Alley. In their 75th anniversary season, NFL owners and players have a message for all football fans. Michael Irvin did his share of damage tonight. A lot more pressure on him, though. If Alvin Harper is out of this lineup for a while, you know, they, they strained at both sides of the field. Jay Novacek took care of the middle. Uh, without Novacek, and if Novacek is back for San Francisco next week and he's a little bit ailing, if Harper's gone all together, Michael Irvin is going to see all sorts of double coverage. And I think some of that double coverage is going to involve Deion Sanders a great deal. Hmm. I'd like to be double covered, and one of the guys that's double covering you is Deion Sanders. Is Kevin Williams, he obviously will be the man on the spot. Yep. As long as Harper is unable to play, I'm just kind of hoping that it's not as bad as the report. It didn't look that bad to us, and you never really know until you get yep. a definitive, definitive answer from the doctor tomorrow after the MRI. I think you speak for all this, Frank. John Jett will propel this punt from the giant 45 yard line. And he has propelled it well. Yes, he has. And he floats one down into the arms of Dave Meggett. 50, 13 yards. Well, next week, this is a uh, this is a very interesting game coming up. AFC matchup. Buffalo all of a sudden two games back. Bills thought they had one yesterday at East Rutherford and wound up losing to the Jets. Big game for them against the Steelers, chasing the surprising Browns in the AFC Central. Three Rivers is the site. Bill Steelers next Monday. Same old uh, cast of characters. Yeah. And if that if the playoffs if the season had ended right now Buffalo would not make the playoffs. So pretty indicative of the, uh, of the amount of pressure and strain on the Bills. Here are the Giants now and Gary Downs takes it up to the 17 yard line. To the relief of the offensive lineman, they go with a draw play. Actor uh, Gary Busey there on the left of your screen, a huge Dallas Cowboy friend, uh, a fan rather, and a friend, and a friend of Troy Aikman. He says, Here I am. Uh, <laughs> Gary uh, raising his arms to the... come in the first quarter, about three quarters of the people going home. Tens of thousands of people. You know, he really did play a good Buddy Holly. In the Buddy Holly story, I don't oh. know who saw it, but it was... It was uh, it was good. Way to chime in, guys. Let me dangle out <laughs> no, here. I'm, I'm listening to this. I like this review. This is good. From the 18-yard line, it was scintillating. Amazed me how you see all these things. Powerful. I mean, you used to amaze me. I know. I Al, 
really does amaze me. The way that you bring something up, he has seen it. <laughs> Say what? There is nothing. Oh, I know. It comes up in any of our production meetings you have not seen. I don't know what you're doing. Well, it's Mark. obvious he didn't see the Buddy Holly story. I, so, well, I, I, I have not seen it. You've got me. He wore those white socks so well. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and four at the 20-yard line on what will be, at least for mine, the final play of the game. Well, not necessarily. Howard Cross up to the 27-yard line. And, ladies and gentlemen, the executive producer of Monday Night Football is Jack O'Hara. Our man, Ken Wolf, the one and only, producing tonight's game, directed by Ray Janel. So brilliantly, as always, Joey Shavo, our technical director. Ben Harvey, our associate producer and head golf pro. <laughs> and uh, as the Giants give it to Gary Downs, Tony Bravo and... Zabo, Jim Lakata, Fred King, Brian Gordon, Steve Hurd, our Director of Information, George Hill, our Statistician, Malibu, Kelly Hayes, as always, our spotter, Mark Amento and Brian Mobelson on the computer stats, Bill Monahan on the sidelines, coordinating things, Andrea Bryan up in the booth, and Barry Switzer of the Dallas Cowboys with Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith head to San Francisco with a mark of 8-1, and a route. Dallas wins it by a score of 38 to 10. We'll talk to you from Pittsburgh next Monday until then. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deirdre, Lynn Swan. Good night from Irving, Texas. As Emma Smith congratulates or says goodbye to Dan Reeves, we want to talk to you just about your night tonight. 163 yards rushing, 35 carries, which is a team record. Tell me about your um, effort here tonight. I think the effort by everybody was was up to par. Uh, we came out, we wanted to play good, we wanted to play execute as an offense, and we was able to do that. You really seem like you were on a mission tonight. 35 carries for you. Well, I know you're keeping pace with what's going on with well, the rushing. Every game run. you go out, you're on a mission, and the mission is to win games, and that's what we're able to do right now. Well, I mean, when the offense is playing as well as we are, the defense is playing as well as they are, and uh, we're able to move the ball up and down the field and throw the ball and run the ball. I mean, that's the kind of ball we want to play, and uh, tonight, we was able to do all of it. Your numbers have to be satisfying, but is this the best that you think this offense has played so far this season, even uh, though it's against the I, Giants who are struggling? <laughs> Sorry, they are. <laughs> I mean, no matter what we do, we play a struggling team. We play poorly. We, we wasn't ready to play. I mean, it don't matter what we do. It seems like we're going to always go up against challenges. But uh, I think uh, I think the day was a, was a great test for our offense. We executed well. We did things that we wanted to do. We was able to run the ball effectively as well as throw the ball. And, uh, you know, it might have been the best that we look. Hopefully we can look better next week. Big game against the 49ers. Let's talk about that. Some of your thoughts heading into that game. Well, right now, you know, we, we, we know our back's up against the wall. They, they expect us they're going to give us a tough game. And uh, so, you know, we want to go out there and just play the best we can. And uh, hopefully we can get some of the guys back that's probably being dinged up a little bit tonight. And uh, hopefully we go out there and play well. All right, thanks for stopping by, Emmett. I appreciate it quite a bit. Let's move on and talk to Russell Maryland now. Let's talk about this game tonight. Were you surprised at how you guys were just able to handle the Giants this way? I know their quarterback, Dave Brown, has been struggling. Uh, were you able to capitalize on that tonight? Yeah, I think uh, defensively we did a great job in capitalizing on uh, their offensive struggles. Uh, we know that we looked at their record. You know, they were 3-5, and five and not they weren't playing like the Giants of old. And we figured if we came out defensively, and kind of shut them down quickly and shut them down often, then we knew we'd have the game in hand. You're reading a lot about this defense, and you guys have really gelled, and you really feel like you can really make your mark this year and maybe get away from that no-name defense kind of thing and establish something on your own. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. I'm telling you, Pam, it, it's been a, a tough road uh, ever since I've been here starting 91. You know, there's never been really any big names on defense, but I think uh, with the young guys, with the talent we have, the way we're coming together, the way we're playing week after week consistently, I think us, uh, you know, we, we're going to get some names. Somebody's going to know who our deep, what our defense is, and what it, what we're all about. I know you didn't want to look ahead to next week, but now that this game is over, let's talk about the 49ers. How do you feel about going into Candlestick and taking on this team? It's always tough going into Candlestick and playing the 49ers. We're just going to have to be ready. We have a little bit shorter week than we normally would. But uh, we're going to have to make the most out of the little time that we have and, uh, and preparing for the 49ers. And I think we'll do a good job. Coach Switzer will, will see to that. Speaking of Coach Switzer, I've heard that you've uh, sort of changed your opinion of this guy. He's really sort of won you over, won you over slowly. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I, I, I was kind of partial to Coach Johnson, and everybody was, you know, wanted to see, well, 
Well, how's this guy going to do? What is he going to do? He's coming from college. He hadn't coached in five years, but he's just a winning coach. He brings in a winning attitude. It's a little bit different than what Coach Johnson did, but uh, it's still a winning attitude, and uh, it keeps us going. He's, he's a great coach. Okay, thanks for stopping by, Russell. Appreciate it a lot. Cowboys moving up to 8-1. and one. Now let's go back to sports.